Hello and welcome to Social Media for Professional Communicators, English 437 and 537. I'll be your professor for this course, Dr. Matt Barton. And in this uh, lecture, I wanted to briefly go over some of the key concepts of the course, some of the questions we'll be exploring. Uh, but also, I want to hear from you, get your thoughts on why you're interested in this course, uh, what aspects of the topic intrigue you or maybe uh, to terrify you. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and then also a little bit about the way this course will be laid out uh, over the course of the course. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the first question, or the first uh, slide is that question uh, that I'm curious about. Uh, why do you want to study social media? Uh, so what it is about Twitter, Facebook, uh, Foursquare, is that even a thing anymore? Instagram, you know, all these different things. Uh, what is it about this topic that intrigues you? Uh, so respond to that and then come back and we'll uh, resume. All right, so my guess is, we'll see, you know, I'll have to see what you uh, inputted there. Uh, but my guess is you're your answer probably fit into one of these categories, and any of these answers would be fine, by the way. Uh, the first is that it's an important subject just because it's so ubiquitous, or it's everywhere. You know, it's hard to get away from it. It's almost like somebody that is off Facebook and Twitter, uh, much less, you know, leave their phone behind, even for a few hours. <laughs> You know, it seems like that's almost like becoming a hermit now. It's like I'm going into the wilderness, into a cavern somewhere, and I'm going to live off the land for a couple of months. I mean, that's what it sounds like to people when you say, I'm not going to check my Facebook today. You know, it's, it's that, that's a little bit ludicrous, but not really all that much, right? Uh, so what the heck is going on with this thing? I mean, it's really caught on. And this uh, one of the textbooks for the course uh, uh, that we'll be reading. Talks a lot about this in the opening chapter, just how big of a deal this is. It's unprecedented. Uh, she says that no other medium in the history of humankind has had this kind of reach. And she uses the example of the Super Bowl, which most people would probably assume, I know I would assume, that more people watch the Super Bowl, uh, which was the most watched TV show in history. Surely more people were watching the Super Bowl uh, they were on Facebook or Twitter, but <laughs> it turns out that's completely wrong. Uh, according to her, only a tenth uh, were doing that. Uh, so everybody else was on uh, Facebook and Twitter, but I guess that's not so surprising. And then I just, uh, I was sort of curious, so I went to Google before I recorded this lecture and just typed in, how many people are on Facebook right now? And I got this statistic here, one billion people. So there's more, I mean, can you imagine this? One billion people are active right now on Facebook. And they also include Instagram. There are more than 100 million people use Instagram every month. So this is something that's, I mean, to say this is having an impact on our society and, and culture seems kind of like a, an understatement you know, at this point. It's something a lot of people are engaging in. It's having some kind of impact. And it's so new that we really don't understand it all that well. I would say. So there are some concerns about it. It's not all just, woo, 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 you know, social media, what a great thing. You know, it's kind of a, sometimes a sinister uh, undercurrent to some of the coverage of this. But uh, anyway, it's everywhere. Uh, another possible answer uh, for this would be there's a lot of money uh, to be made. You know, this is not just for a lot of people, not just something they are curious about, they want to study just for fun, but they're actually thinking, hey, maybe I could get a job. You know, maybe this could be, I could have a career uh, doing social media. And we've, uh, I just think, recently graduated some uh, master's students who were doing precisely this, putting together portfolios to show they have the, the chops, the skills, try to land one of these jobs. And I'll show you here uh, some of the possibilities in a second. But they tend to be pretty, uh, I mean, they're kind of all over the place, you know, obviously. But there's some, definitely true that there's money to be made. They got, I got a link here or a quote here, rather, from uh, University of Florida. Uh, they have an online master's program in social media. Uh, but they're claiming there, and they got this, I forget where they got this information, but they say, anyway, uh, starting salaries for social media marketing directors averaged 60 grand, with experienced professionals averaging $94,000. So very good careers. You can see there's a pretty good spectrum there. You know, we don't really know maybe what the entry-level stuff, a lot of intern positions and things like that opening right now. Uh, but my guess is if you get in there, in the ground floor of this thing, 
Uh, you got a good reputation. You get good credentials. You know, the, the sky is the limit. Got a lot of people really excited. Uh, and then you may already have an edge. You know, I'm assuming that you're an English English major, English major or communication studies major, uh, or at least uh, have taken lots of classes in English to be taking this course. Uh, so my guess is you uh, have some pretty good writing skills, pretty good editing skills, or at least you're working on those. And those are really going to be important for anybody going into uh, social media. It's actually something that I don't think it's said enough. You think about English majors, you probably technology probably doesn't leap to mind. Uh, but that's that's unfortunate because, as we see, here's a quote from Angela Myers, who's the chief learning officer at uh, Myers Educational Services, very active blogger. Uh, according to her, uh, let's see, look at this quote here. There's no question that social media tools and platforms shape the way people, schools, and businesses work. But social media has created a new form and route to channel information. In this new information age, for all its high-tech gadgetry, success is writing-based. So I think that's where you really see that advantage is having an English background, having an English major, knowing how to write well. You know, there's many, many people out there that know how to use Facebook, know how to use Twitter. You know, they have the technical, the technological skills to do that. Uh, but they don't have those writing skills. So just being able to log in, just being able to, uh, you know, play around with templates and things on WordPress, that's great. But if you don't have those writing skills, uh, you're not going to get very far. And so I think this is really good news. Uh, hopefully this is good news for you. Uh, maybe you're worried like, well, I don't know. I don't really know coding. I don't know scripting. I don't know what CSS stands for. <laughs> you know, all these kind of concerns. <laughs> I don't like... Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm intimidated by uh, this stuff. Uh, but really what you should be saying is I've already got the hard thing done, right? I have the writing skills. Uh, so I've already got that edge. And, you know, as we'll see hopefully over the course of the semester, the other stuff is you really should not be so intimidated by it. Uh, it's easy enough to pick it up. It's not like it used to be where you just, you know, it's almost it's so esoteric. It's almost like a, a, some kind of, uh, you had to have like advanced calculus or something. You know, nothing like that. Uh, we can really get a lot done with just a few basic uh, basic skills in that area that we'll get into over the course of the semester. But anyway, I think this is pretty good news. Uh, other key advantages. Uh, actually, before we do this, I wanted to uh, swap over and look at this link. If I can get it pulled up here. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> Uh, let's keep scrolling back. Yes. Uh, so here are 10 jobs that pay you to be on social media all day. Uh, so I thought we could take a look at this. This is on Monster. Of course, that's the website, the go-to website for employment opportunities, or one of them. So you can see some of the some of the variety here. They have marketing managers, $129,000. And again, looking at these titles, sometimes you think, well, you know, what would, I, I'm a good writer, but what does it have to do with this? Or what does that have to do with that? Uh, the truth is, usually they're fine. A lot of employers would be happy to teach you the technical stuff. It's just, they can't teach you how to write a sentence. <laughs> That's the truth. And so if you can write well, and if you can read well, uh, to start with, but if you can read and write well, and then if you can communicate orally, even better. You know, a lot of the other stuff you can pick up on the job. And so again, the hard work is, is done in a lot of cases. Let's see what else we have here. Copywriter. You know, I talked to a lot of students who are interested in this. So if you want to make blog posts or whatever the case may be, uh, 49000 per year uh, on the copywriting job. And if we look here, there's a little section here called What You'll Need. And if we look at that, it says that you it's helpful to have an undergraduate degree, but look at this bit, preferably in English. So that's kind of a shocker, right? But Preferably English, uh, marketing or communications also on the list. And, you know, you could scroll on down here. There's lots of uh, other examples. Uh, here's one that most people probably don't think about, public relations specialist. So that doesn't sound very Englishy to me. You know, it, we, there's different departments to cover this material. But, again, if you look at the what you'll need section here, one of the, one of the items on this list is... Well, let's just look at the whole thing. A bachelor's degree with a specialization in writing. 
So to my mind, that could be English, uh, probably more uh, if your rhetoric or writing studies even better. But English is certainly on that list. You know, business is at the end of the list. And so that gives you some idea of uh, what I'm talking about here. But we can just scroll all, all day and find uh, job after job. And then also a lot of uh, the students I work with, I'm an advisor as well. A lot of students come to me, you know, and they say, and they say Matt, I want to do something where I don't have to leave Minnesota. You know, I've got family here. I, I'm not interested in moving to California or New York or, you know, some <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> uh, well, the good news is a lot of the social media jobs, well, for one, a lot of this is done online. So you don't necessarily have to go, even if the business is located in San Francisco, let's say. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to move to San Francisco. Uh, a lot of the stuff can be done, you know, at your at your desk at home. Uh, but here's just some examples. I went to uh, Indeed.com and did a simple search for social media. And I said I wanted to limit the results to Minnesota. And I got 282 jobs in the search. You know, some of these are better than others, you know, but even the intern, there's an intern here for a dolphin water taxi. And look at that. They want, they start at $15 an hour for this internship position, up to $15 to $22. Uh, and you, if you look at what they want you to be proficient with, Facebook marketing, tracking metrics, you know, all stuff we'll cover in this course. YouTube and creating a channel, again, all stuff we'll cover in this course. So, <laughs> you're probably not the... You're not dynamite there. It's an intern position, but it gives you some idea of what companies are looking for. You know, this one, again, they want social media, including LinkedIn. Uh, you know, that's a good one to get familiar with. A lot of people know Facebook and Twitter, but really LinkedIn is where you go for the jobs. Uh, scrolling on down a little bit, we have communication social media specialist. Uh, this one's $15 an hour. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Just keep scrolling down. We've got social media manager at a hotel, uh, more intern positions. Here's a social media specialist for an automotive group. And I mean, as you can see, this just goes on forever, right? And here's one in Sock Rapids. <laughs> I think, I don't even think this was here a minute ago. Or I must have missed it. Yeah, four days ago this was posted. That's uh, so a very recent. That's the content marketing specialist retail technology group Sock Rapids, thirty thousand to forty-five grand a year, posting videos to YouTube and Vimeo. Um, so anyway, I'll let you look at this. I'm kind of, I'm gonna get <laughs> John. I I find this kind of stuff fascinating. I love to look at like what they, what skills they're looking for, so I can see just you know, do my classes teach those skills? You know, how does, does that line up nicely? Uh, but hopefully, I made the point there that there are many, many jobs, and you're probably already qualified to do some of these, to be honest with you. Uh, some other key, uh, let's see, some other key advantages. It looks like I'm cutting off a little bit of the text there, but uh, I don't worry about that. Uh, so a lot of people are finding that careers that weren't possible before or weren't feasible before, and I would put uh, being a novelist, being a poet, uh, making uh, independent films, you know, a lot of these things, you certainly could do it, but you're not going to make a living doing it, right? That's not your day job, as it were. Uh, you've got something that you do, and then maybe you do that stuff on the side for fun. Uh, but what we're seeing increasingly, and a lot of this is due to this uh, Kindle device, is that more and more authors, and nobody saw this coming. That's the fun thing about this. More and more authors are making a living. So this is their day job. They're now writing short stories. They're writing novellas. Uh, they're writing poems and, and novels. And we have one here in St. Cloud, a former uh, student here, uh, Jesse, uh, Jess Lowry, bestseller on Kindle with her uh, thrillers. Uh, I mean, it's, that's awesome, right? Uh, so what was kind of just a dream before, I mean, it's hard enough as an author just to get published much. And even if you got published, which that was incredibly rare, uh, you know, the huge uh, gatekeeping happening there but even if you happen to get published as a novelist you get your first novel published great but chances of getting a second one published practically nil the cells are down you know you're it's almost basically what i'm saying is it's almost a, a minor miracle <laughs> to be able to make a living uh, not so anymore a lot of it has to do with this kindle uh, so authors are able to write a novel get it onto the, the kindle 
you know, you don't have to go through the publishers uh, to do this. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. You can have it professionally edited. And then like, uh, like Jess, actually make a good living. I'm not talking about, you know, scraping by. <laughs> You're actually making good money uh, doing what you love to do. And that's just a, one example. Uh, other fields, oh, game development, uh, do, uh, doing what I do with video production. I'll talk a little bit about my YouTube channel in a minute. Uh, so you could have a YouTube channel where you ask for donations or patrons to support you, and people will do that. You know, it's crowdfunding. You know, somebody really loves your videos, uh, they will pay you. You know, and it might be like only a dollar or two, but you get enough of those people, and pretty soon you've got a, you know, at the very minimum, a sideline, a little moonlighting, uh, maybe even a full-time uh, gig. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, I even see uh, beer brewing uh, doing this uh, route. So you, they don't have to depend on the big advertising companies, the big marketing, the big startup. Uh, you know, it kind of cuts all that out, and you can really just focus in. You know, if you have those social media chops, if you understand social media understand how Facebook, Twitter, and all these things can help you, Instagram, and so on, you can actually use these tools to tell people about your novel, right, and get funding for it, uh, and distribute it even. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, possibilities here. You know, it's not all just uh, working for that auto parts store, right? <laughs> you know, there's just so many possibilities, it's, it kind of blows the mind, really. Uh, some obstacles and concerns about this. Uh, so one of the themes I hope we'll get into in this course is that, you know, it, there's a tendency to kind of uh, either celebrate social media so you're like, rah, rah, this is wonderful, it's amazing. Uh, so that's one side of it. The other side of it is the opposite extreme where it's, you know, oh, the, the kids are on these cell phones and it's it's turning them into mindless zombies or, you know, this is the new crack cocaine uh, smartphones or, you know, whatever it is, you know. It's like these extreme views. Uh, so hopefully what we can do is get a little bit more subtlety in there, a little more sophisticated outlooks on some of these questions. Uh, but there are some concerns, um, not just ethical, we will get into ethical, but one might just be the competition. And so, yeah, so there's, you can put your work on YouTube, you can put your book on the Kindle, but how are you going to get it noticed? There's so many other authors, so many other YouTubers, you know, how are you ever going to get noticed? Now, that's a burning question for a lot of people. and. You know, if it, obviously, if I knew the answer, I wouldn't be here. I would be on a, <laughs> my own uh, island somewhere in a mansion uh, with billions of dollars, right? It's, it's kind of the big secret. There's a lot of luck involved here. Uh, but there are things you can do, I think, that will help help you to you know, reach your goals. Uh, no guarantees, though. Uh, ethics, this is kind of what I wanted to focus in on on this slide, really. Uh, so even though we can post things, how can we do this in an ethical way? You know, we've all heard about the people using social media unethically posting uh, false information, spreading that, uh, basically propaganda that looks like, might look like legitimate news, might look like facts, uh, turns out to be uh, created by some kind of a bot, <laughs> right? Or it's, it's slanderous or libelous material. Now, there's a lot of uh, scary stuff happening out there, frankly. You know, so... You know, what if a company wants you to use social media, but you find out they want you to post things that really aren't right for some reason? A lot of uh, maybe something they're covering up something, emphasizing something. You know, whatever the case may be, you know, what are the ethical dimensions of this? You know, how can we get into that in a more sophisticated way than just, oh, it's wonderful, or, oh, it's evil? <laughs> uh, digital literacy is another concern. And I find this probably happens more with English majors and English uh, graduates, for that matter. You know, they'll say, you know, there's there's so much to do. You know, it's all I can do to stay on top of my reading. You know, I can't Instagram. What What is this? It's like the new thing or Snapchat or whatever. You know, it's like every day there's something new. You know, how can I keep up with all that? And especially teachers. You know, a lot of teachers want to use technology. But it's like, you know, as soon as you learn one thing, that's obsolete. Now you got to learn this other thing. Uh, so it's just kind of bewildering. Like, how do you do all this? You know, it's a lot to keep up with. So we'll get into this and strategies. A lot of this course is about strategies, right? Strategies for uh, social media, strategies for digital literacy. You know, where can you go to? What's really worth learning? What's just worth looking at? <laughs> you know, what, should, what do you want to be an early adopter on versus a late adopter and so on and so forth? Uh, and then the style. 
So even if you're good at writing papers for your literature class, your rhetoric class or whatever, is that going to be good for blogging? You know, is that the same skill set you'll need to write good tweets? Uh, how's that going to play a role in your YouTube channel? You know, so those are the questions too. You might be a good, you might have a good style that's very effective for you in one context, but how can you adapt that uh, for skills in another context? You know, I guess I could also add there just the conventions. You know, are you, a lot of uh, people these days, they say, well, we don't want to study grammar. We don't want to study mechanics and <laughs> things of that sort. Of course, it comes back to bite them later, right, when they're, uh, you know, people are insulting them. Um, unfairly, perhaps, but, you know, again, I think being an English major, there's that expectation that you probably know <laughs> where to put the commas. <laughs> and we'll cover that a little bit in this course. I, I want to... You know, a lot of people kind of shun that, but I think it's really important, especially when it's public writing. It's something that you're going to be putting on a blog. You know, I think you would rest a little easier maybe uh, if you had had that peer-reviewed by your classmates and uh, maybe at the right place. Okay, anyway, here's another question for you. Uh, so thinking about your career field, so what do you want to do after you leave St. Cloud State? Maybe you got a couple possibilities in mind. Maybe you got your dream your passion, uh, whatever it is. So just think about that and then think about how could I leverage social media in that career field? So just ponder on that for a few minutes, write a response, and then come back. All right, who am I? Uh, somebody who doesn't like talking about himself, <laughs> but it's necessary. And so I am Dr. Matt Barton been a professor of English here at lovely St. Cloud State University since 2005. Wow, <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> I'm an author. I've written uh, six books on gaming. A lot of those are about history. I, I really like computer role-playing games. That's my specialty. But I do a lot of books on uh, the history of uh, famous games or famous platforms. You know, Nintendo, Mario, etc., Tomb Raider. Grand Theft Auto, you name it. Uh, I've also done a lot of uh, academic articles for uh, uh, peer-reviewed journals, including Computers and Composition. And I was always kind of uh, thrilled to see, you know, this ways you can get the metrics, not to jump ahead too much, but you can see like, okay, what's the most cited article? Or what's the most downloaded article? And so on. Those are metrics. And I'm, you know, really proud of this that, I don't know if it's uh, still true, but at least for a long time I was the number one article in this journal, Computers and Composition, and it was an article about social media. A lot of the stuff we'll be covering in this course, so, you know, I'm really proud of that. And then I had another one that I co-authored about Facebook in the classroom, Facebook and Pedagogy, something like that. <laughs> I can't remember the titles. <laughs> uh, that one also did very well. Uh, so I think you're in pretty good hands here. Uh, also, I've applied this stuff. I'm not just writing about it, but I am a producer. I have my own YouTube channel two YouTube channels, actually, but uh, the one that's for fun is called Matt Chat, and that's where every, uh, try usually every week, I bring on somebody, a game industry professional, game designer, developer, a writer, musicians, I mean, I had people uh, from all aspects of the gaming industry on there, and then we chat, talk about, you know, the career, their, their passions, their motivations, and so on. Uh, so I've been doing that for over 10 years now. And I've worked up to close to, I think I'm getting pretty close to 20,000 subscribers and over 3 million views on that. So it's, it's always kind of weird with YouTube. Some You put out a video, sometimes it gets like 100 views. You put out like part two of that same video and it gets like 10,000 views. <laughs> Just who knows <laughs> why. Uh, but anyway, again, something I'm very proud of and that, you know, I said I've been doing that for 10 years uh, to build up that kind of audience. So it definitely takes time, but it's it's really paid off. It's been very successful for me. Uh, I've also been interviewed by uh, Wired magazine. They actually wire, uh, they interviewed me about the Dungeons and Desktops second edition book I wrote about role-playing games. But then when I was chatting, then we started talking about the YouTube channel, so that kind of became the focus of their, their article. Uh, so again, very uh, just kind of amazing to me, and hopefully you'll uh, get excited as well, just the possibilities here. You know, where you, no matter where you're starting from, who you are, you know, you can you can learn this stuff, you can do things, you can get other people excited about your work, and you know, the sky's the limit. It's it's really uh, thrilling. 
Yeah, never mind. My Twitter account. 2,000 followers on Twitter. You know, okay. Uh, I really like this. 163 supporters on Patreon. And so the Patreon is the crowdfunding uh, site I was telling you about where you can get people to pitch in like a dollar. You could say every time I write a blog post, you know, I get a dollar from you for that. Kind of sponsored. You're like a, you have a patron, basically. And so it takes that patron concept, but splits it up. And what's nice about this, you don't have to go to a publisher and get the publisher's permission and deal with royalties and all that. I actually make, uh, believe it or not, I make, uh, I'm actually not sure what the percentage is, but I'm pretty sure I make at least twice, if not more like 10 times, uh, the money with my YouTube channel and the patron patron system uh, than I do with any of those books. You, know, you publish a book, you get like two checks a year, royalty checks, and you know, unless you're like, unless you're Jess, you know, I guess that she's, she's probably making big bank. Uh, but for me, you know, I'm doing, I don't want to give the numbers on this uh, lecture here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, suffice it to say, uh, you might be better off with social media than with even publishing books commercially. Okay, a little breakdown of the course. So what will we actually be doing in this class? It'll be a little different if you're a graduate student. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit later, uh, but a lot of it will be the same. Uh, so the majority will be, you'll be reading chapters in the various books we've got in the course, and then you'll be uh, responding to prompts on uh, D2L. And so if it's from the uh, Renegades book, you know, I'll just try to come up with questions for you, uh, or you can post your own nuggets. Uh, I put instructions for that on D2L. Uh, so there'll be a lot of class discussion on the uh, readings. But the other book, the Digital uh, Editing and Writing for Digital media. I forget the title. <laughs> Terrible with titles. <laughs> but anyway, that other book, uh, they've got nice uh, writing activities in there that are tailored for social media. Uh, so prepping you for that. So we'll be uh, working on those as well. And I think you'll find those, I think they're, they're great, very creative, a lot of fun. But, you know, it's for a good cause. <laughs> and we'll also be doing this, what we're doing now, watching, responding to lectures on Edpuzzle. <clears throat> And then the applied section will be to create your own blog. Now, St. Cloud State, we've got our own WordPress apparatus now, so it's relatively easy to, you know, St. Cloud State will, will host the stuff for you, you don't have to worry about that. And what you'll do, though, what you will need to think about, though, is what kind of, <coughs> excuse me, and what kind of topics do you want your blog to cover? And if you don't know right off, right now, that's fine, I'm going to help you with this. But you can work with a team on this. You know, I will let you, if you just really don't, if you hate other people, <laughs> you just really want to do solo, uh, fine. Uh, but it's not a really good look, I think. You know, again, this is supposed to be social media. You want to show <laughs> employers. You can work well with other people. And so I really encourage you to at least collaborate with one other person. Uh, but you'll have this blog, a WordPress blog of your own, and you'll be making posts on that and sharing it. And then the uh, last component there is to use these social media tools, Twitter, Instagram, whatever the case may be, try to explore each of those. Uh, but you'll be using those to promote the blog. Right? So it kind of starts with the blog, and then you're using these other tools to try to draw people to the blog, uh, to that content you're creating. Uh, so explore all of those options. Now, as far as possible blog topics, you know, I've taught different classes similar to this one over the years, and I've I try to keep track of like what worked out well, what gave people trouble. Uh, but here's some ones that are pretty easy to do. Uh, I think the first and foremost one, to me, the best one is something local, so you don't have to go anywhere. You know, it's right here. It's already something you're doing. You are. It's uh, for example, uh, an SCSU club, a uh, community group. You know, if you're doing a Maybe you're in theater, music, whatever. You know, maybe you have a, maybe you're working on uh, some creative projects, some poetry, some books. You know, I had a good one one time where it was uh, they were kind of uh, working with uh, other aspiring authors, students in the creative writing program, and they were kind of workshopping uh, short stories and things and poems on, on the on the blog. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Had a real life application, and they had a good time with that. Uh, but really, any other club or group. You know, maybe you're doing the game studies or the game uh, development group, game uh, esports. <laughs> you know, this blog will cover esports here at St. Cloud State. 
Uh, or, you know, anything is really possible. It could be a book club. You know, you might be a member of a book club. You could do that. It doesn't have to be SCSU. Just something that, basically by local, I just mean something you're already familiar with uh, this, within the bounds, right? Uh, another option might be to uh, do something professional. You might want to partner with uh, Dr. Hyman on this, you know, with an eye towards an internship maybe later on. But and you might already be, be doing an internship uh, with a business or a local organization of some sort. And you could uh, do their social media stuff. You know, you could pick up from that say, look, we're doing this. I'm taking this course. We've got a WordPress thing. You know, we can maybe we can partner up with you and, you know, help you with social media operations. You know, that could be that'd be fine. Uh, third, maybe some kind of professional interest or hobbies, you know, latest uh, events. Basically, what you want is something that's is regular content. There's going to be news about it over the course of the semester, uh, so you have something to post about. Uh, you you want to have fresh content every so often, uh, so you might have a blog. Just thinking off the top of my head, maybe uh, you know, one of the the indie. I mean, what is some great uh, maybe like the Kindle. Some, some authors publishing on Kindle in the thriller market. <laughs> or Minnesota authors on Kindle. I don't know. I'm just trying to make stuff up. But you, know, you could track that. Uh, if you're a graduate student, I would encourage you to look into uh, you know, the, the field, the academic field you're interested in. So like, what are the latest developments in some aspect of uh, composition, rhetoric, uh, linguistics, you know, whatever the case uh, may be for you. Uh, maybe you could keep an eye on like when the new journals come out. Maybe uh, write about an article that interests you. Uh, I think that would be very useful, not just for this course, but you know, for your career. I, you know, that's the goal. I mean, that's really the sweet spot. I think when you're when you're doing a project like this, it's not just for this course, but you're learning stuff that is they're going to be useful outside of the course, right, or broader uh, stuff. But if you want to do a hobby, uh, that's fine too. Maybe you are into music, drumming. I had one about <laughs> drumming, drumming one time. That was a lot of fun. Ooh, I see my voice doesn't give out before the end of this. Yeah, publishing and supporting authors, local music. I keep coming back to the music because that was a... I really enjoyed that one because the, the team, the bloggers, would go to these uh, shows and record uh, some, of the, some of the songs, some of the performances, right? And they had the permission uh, to post those on the blog. So it's like a very audio-visual experience. So it wasn't just writing. You know, they wrote about the events, but they could also actually, like, here's the song. <laughs> and here's what it was like at the, at the concert. And so that was, that was really fun. Uh, but same thing with poetry. You know, there's all kinds of uh, poetry events where people are reading poems. You know, you have to get the permission, uh, but maybe you could record some of that and put it on your blog and, and write about it there. Okay, so <clears throat> here's a link to some outstanding blogs. These are the top income earning blogs. That's over at Forbes.com. There's a link there. Uh, so go check out the link. Look at a blog or two, you know, see which one captures your interest. And then uh, come back and answer this question. So what kind of topic does that blog cover? Uh, maybe it's more than one topic. Uh, but anyway, what's the blog? What's the focus of the blog? And then try to figure out how often are they posting new content? Once, once a day, several times a day, once a month, you know, what's the deal? Uh, and then look at how are they leveraging Facebook, Twitter, you know, are they using these other social media tools to help market that content? Uh, so you don't have to, you know, I'm not expecting like a page long response here, but just kind of briefly think about these questions and answer. And I think that will give you some insight into uh, your future in this course. All right, so <laughs> thank you for watching this. Thank you for uh, signing up for the course. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please ask those. If you want to just make some comments, uh, that's always great too. Always love to hear from you. You know, it is an online class, so we might not, may or may not meet face to face. Of course, you can always come by my office. I'll post my office hours uh, soon on the syllabus. But uh, you know, at the very least, just let me know what you think so far and what has you excited. You know, if you do have any concerns, let me know, and I will see you next time.